Welcome to the Weekend Edition. I'm Adriana Cotero. Glad you could join us. Trial has been ongoing all week for the two brothers accused in the Megillah machete attack that occurred on June 4th. Opening statements started on Monday in the courtroom of Judge Vern Perez, and yesterday counsels presented their closing arguments. Now the fate of these young defendants is in the hands of the jury. An incident that started with a family dispute between two brothers, their first cousin, a bottle of liquor, a machete, then led to an attack upon innocent motorists passing by, has brought forth a jury of 12 to determine the verdict for 20-year-old Emmanuel Resselop and 25-year-old Jordan Rachulop. It was on June 4th in Manilao in front of the best store along University Drive when a 911 call was placed and officers and medics arrived at the scene. 911, where is the emergency? female individual, her name is uh, Jolene Resident. She was sitting on the ground and she was tending to the care of a person resident who had some kind of injury on the left side of his body. Now the young defendants face major charges in this high-profile case. In the opening statements, Emmanuel Resolov's attorney Samuel Tecker states to the jury that his client is facing nearly 22 charges in total. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there's no way to sugarcoat this. Emmanuel has been charged with many, many crimes. He's been charged with attempted murder, aggravated assault in the second degree, aggravated assault in the third degree. We got criminal mischief, terrorizing, and then family violence. So that's six, six charges, okay, or six crimes. The criminal mischief and terrorizing charges each have multiple counts, as well a special allegation is attached to each crime, except the family violence charge. Tucker's opening statement ends with this. Only what you need to do now is listen to the facts, listen to the evidence that the government presents, and you have to make a determination of whether or not Mr. Brown <coughs> has met his burden of proof, and he has proven each and every element of every crime charge. The co-defendant, Jordan Rachulop's attorney, Gloria Rudolph, states within her opening statement to the jury, quote, you will hear testimony that will leave you with a lot of unanswered questions, that there were many leads not investigated, end quote, arguing this. But most importantly, you're going to hear testimony from some of the people who are in those cars who specifically said that no, my client, Jordan Rachula, did not attack them in their car, did not confront them. Assistant Attorney General Sean Brown had nearly 20 witnesses give testimony. Amongst them included former senator and current University of Guam professor Judith Guthertz. I recall uh, all of a sudden uh, uh, individuals uh, uh, came up to my vehicle and started pouncing on the vehicle and on the door of the vehicle. Now, may uh, I interrupt you? I apologize. Yes. What do you mean by pouncing? Attacking the vehicle, attorney. Um, do you think, uh, were, they, were they using their hands? How no. They make no, they them? were using uh, machetes, and also rocks were being thrown at my vehicle. Another witness took the stand, Dean Sparks. And as I was riding my bike, um, I noticed uh, a man lying down in the parking lot at the store and I knew he was injured and there was a lady on top of him screaming and crying and uh, there was people running around and you know I, I was just concerned because I saw the guy lying down so I started to slow down and then all of a sudden um, I'm getting hit with rocks and then I got hit with a machete in the leg and um, I went down, but all this time too, you know, I'm seeing all this chaos and mayhem. There's people running around throwing rocks and smashing windows and just, it's just crazy, you know. Chaos, the word used by witnesses and counsels to describe the day of the incident. After listening to witness testimonies and hearing arguments from both parties throughout this week, the jury will determine whether or not the brothers are guilty or not of the charges that remain moving forward. Rachulop was dismissed of aggravated assault as a felony and assault as a misdemeanor along with counts for criminal mischief and terrorizing. Resslop is still charged with attempted murder and aggravated assault. 
The defendant was dropped of one count for criminal mischief and one count for terrorizing. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero says she will march for Chamuru self-determination on Monday. Chris Barnett spoke with the governor and files this report. I plan to, yes, and I plan to uh, be at the Adeloupe also rally. MAGA hog at Lou Leon Guerrero saying she's in for the Fidogi March for Chamorro self-determination. The governor echoing the KUAM some sentiments that the federal court ruling that essentially delivered what could be a killing blow to Chamorro self-determination is actually a blessing in disguise. I think the Dave Davis case uh, sort of um, spurred the um, interest and the um, attention for our self-determination uh, efforts. And uh, of course, it's, uh, it's, the, the decision wasn't very um, acceptable to a lot of the people. Um, and we're going to just look at what our options are and our opportunities. But definitely, we are going to continue with the progress that we have made since uh, I have taken office. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals affirmed a District Court of Guam ruling that found a Chamorro only vote violated Dave Davis's constitutional rights. The governor tells KUAM the court ruling does not signify an end to her administration's efforts on a vote to determine what political status the island's native inhabitants want for Guam. I'm very committed and very um, um, attentive to making sure that we do move forward with our self-determination. Um, the White House, of course, is very uh, uh, aware that that's happening. Fanogi March lead organizer and former Guam delegate Dr. Robert Underwood says the march is a statement to Guam's elected leaders. Underwood is saying the march will be the biggest nonpartisan political event Guam has ever seen. While the court ruling is preventing the ongoing registration of native inhabitants for the political status plebiscite, other decolonization efforts are moving full steam ahead including a decolonization conference to be held in September, a study on status option pros and cons, and a political status education campaign. The governor, meanwhile, says she has the right man to lead the way in Commission on Decolonization Executive Director Melvin Wampat Borja. He has a wealth of information, very intelligent, and uh, very much aware of the various statuses and a lot of the history of our uh, efforts. And so he's a great asset, I think, to my administration in pursuing the Commission on Self-Determination and Decolonization. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Fanogi March organizers say participants should gather at Adeloupe at 8 a.m. and be ready for a 9 a.m. sharp march time. The march will go northbound on Marine Corps Drive to the federal courthouse and back to Adeloupe. The governor has officially met key players in Japan's travel and tourism industry, and the Mega Haga had also had a sit-down with the U.S. ambassador to Japan and what she says was a productive trip. Here's more. Japanese dancers performing for the Guam delegation at the U.S. Ambassador to Japan's house during a trip that Governor Lulian Guerrero is calling a good investment. The Guam group is saying this performance was coming full circle as the leader of this dance troupe visited Guam a decade ago to talk with war survivors. Inspired by our culture and taught by Chamorro dance master Frank Rabon, the performance an example of the unique things our island has to offer as a tourism destination. That sentiment, a big part of the governor's trip as she officially met with the U.S. ambassador and key Japan travel and tourism players, the travel paid for with funds from the Guam Visitors Bureau. The biggest accomplishment is we were introduced as the new leadership, both in GVB board and also government officials, and very thankful that, the, that I could go out there because it means a lot to... Um, GVB, you know, GVB and, and tourism is really the biggest uh, economy we have. Uh, it's 60% of our revenues and also uh, we yield about $1.4 billion in the economy from tourism. So need to always support them, need to always be committed and so that's why I went out there. 
The governor says she's also pushing for more direct flights from new markets in Japan to Guam. And then we try to um, influence the uh, aviation people, they're like the FAA, to have uh, flights come out of Haneda to Guam. And they couldn't do that, airspace and so forth. So we're working with the other airlines to try and see if we can start getting more uh, visitors out of Haneda. She was accompanied by First Gentleman Jeff Cook, Special Assistant Elisa Dames, and GVB leadership. The governor says valuable networking with the U.S. Ambassador to Japan may have gotten Guam a new partner in pursuing more tourism dollars from the country. And one of the uh, functions of the embassy there in, the, in Japan is to bring more uh, Japanese business to the United States. And so he's encouraging also a greater market share from Japan to Guam. So it's really very productive. The trip marked the Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration's first official state visit to Japan. And the governor says networking with the country's tourism stakeholders will make inroads towards more visitor arrivals for Guam. We met with various government officials. We met with the head of the JATA. And this is the guy that can influence all the other agencies to book flights to Guam and encourage their market uh, to come to Guam. And then we met with GT, uh, JTA, which is the Japan Travel Agency, equivalent of GVB for the government officials. And they were also very uh, supportive. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Stay tuned. Next on Weekend Edition, we have trend spotting and still to come the Guam Crime Stoppers report. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app. Available at the App Store now. Half the day, I'm in the club. Half a day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half a day, I'm in the club. Advances in technique and medications used to prevent dental pain have shattered the myth that a dental visit is something to fear, even the dreaded root canal or wisdom tooth extraction. Swabbing or spraying a topical numbing agent on before the injection and using different techniques and anesthetics can create a relatively comfortable or pain-free injection. Injections are often the most feared procedure. Some patients don't like the sounds or the vibrations of decay removal. If you're still nervous or you gag easy, Despite these techniques, very safe oral medicines can be taken before your dental appointment to eliminate all fears or some clinics use nitrous oxide gas. Pain relievers can easily be prescribed to eliminate mild to severe dental discomfort after any visit. For your helpful dental minute, I'm Dr. Kenny Bourgeois, Paradise Smiles. We shall never know all the good that a simple smile can do. Welcome to another episode of Trend Spotting. Here's what you thought about this week's top stories. It's the high profile trial everyone's talking about. Two brothers, Emmanuel Resilep and Jordan Ratchelep, accused in the machete attacks on passing motorists in Manila earlier this year. The incident prompted a series of town hall meetings in several villages on public safety spearheaded by Adeloup. The video shown in court shows the family throwing fists in a store parking lot. This altercation between the defendant Emmanuel Resilep and his first cousin, the victim, Ursin Resilep, resulted in Ursin bleeding out from his side after being cut by a machete. 
The court ruled on the defense's motion for acquittal and dismissed Jordan Rachula from aggravated assault as a third-degree felony and assault as a misdemeanor. Rachula was dismissed of various counts for criminal mischief and terrorizing. As for Emmanuel Rachula, the charges of attempted murder with the special allegation, along with aggravated assault and family violence, will move forward. Rasalep was dismissed of one count for terrorizing and one count for criminal mischief. Here's how some of you felt online. Henry stated, It's not what role did alcohol play in this case. It's the abuse of the alcohol that was consumed. Overconsumption of the alcohol that day that led to the arrest of the two brothers. Alcoholism is a problem. And William asked, why insult the people of Guam by having this trial? Make sure they pay back the cost. The trial is expected to end any day now. The opportunity to grab a cup of joe with Guam's finest was a fixture of the Calvo Tenorio administration. And Thursday morning, it resurfaced with a good crowd at the Jigo McDonald's. They gave us some resources and some reference to go to the internal affairs and the right procedures to the way they do it. So. It was a good thing we came here, so now we know where to go and who to reach out to when things happen like this. Captain Tim Santos added, it's easier for people to approach police in a casual setting like McDonald's and they're more likely to share. So it gets a chance for our, our citizens to come out and uh, talk to us and about some of their concerns and what we're doing about it, or even some of their suggestions. One thing was clear, the community missed coffee with a cop and at least one person there Thursday morning would like more of the same. Over on Facebook, Martina Cruz asked, are there certain days, times, and locations for the people to have a chat over coffee with our GPD officers? And Karen throwing up some emojis showing her gratitude. With the recent deliberations on the fiscal year 2020 budget bill, we asked our followers on Instagram if they thought if five days to scrutinize and pass a fiscal year budget for the government of Guam was enough time. Here's how some of you answered. Lil Angel 671 flat out said no, agreeing with her were underscore NMGS, T Kids Mom, NYE Study, and Local Boy 671670. However, Lizu Wan says yes, believing that five days is enough time. Well, Thursday night, the senators completed their section by section deliberations on the fiscal year 2020 budget bill. The legislature then recessed until Saturday at 9 30 p.m. and are expected to vote on the measure. Saturday is the deadline for them to pass the budget. Lastly, Hall's Angels Mendikiki football player Kaimani Conception showed her speed as she took the handoff to the house for a touchdown. In this video, you can see Conception juke past the defense as she was cheered on by her team's supporters. Many of those supporters and friends also took to the KOM Instagram page to celebrate that play. Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Avadeen, welcome back, everybody. Sometimes the most effective lessons in life are so simple you don't even give them 
the proper mind they deserve. Now, Sergeant Paul Tapao is here with GPD. And, Sarge, that was exactly what you and your colleagues at GPD educated us this week on how to have situational awareness mm -hmm. and stranger danger. Like, we, we put that live on Facebook. So many people were watching. Everybody was like, wow, I never realized yeah. just how easy it is to be aware. It, it is. You know, I mean, when, when we were asked to develop a curriculum for uh, stranger, uh, stranger danger presentation, right, we utilize what we learned in the Guam Police Department and, of course, life experience. And one thing that we, we stayed focused on was not getting confrontation, not getting physical with, um, you know, the assailant or the suspect. And it really, when we broke everything down and we were looking for ways in which people can grasp the, the technique, we used danger and we, we showcased that time and distance, assessing, being aware of what's going on, how do you escape and evade, and, of course, using everything to your advantage. And, um, you know, you saw it firsthand, and, you know, after I, I watched it again and at, at full motion in which they were doing it, 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 it really painted its own picture in itself. Some people were even putting on, on Facebook, and not in a joking way, but they were like, wow, you know, I've seen that in movies. You were referencing yeah. Bruce Lee on a couple of occasions, but they're like, you know, Jason Bourne, where you use a book or a three by five index card or in, you know, um, in our situation, uh, Megan, the actress that was playing, you know, the victim, she used a sweater and yeah. that, that can be an effective escape and evasion tool. It is, it is. And it really is you being aware of how you're going to react to the situation. A lot of times when people become victims of a crime, they're, they're caught off guard. And it really boils down to hunter or predator prey concept, right? It's, it's these guys, the criminals, the first element is they use concealment. They don't want to get caught. Whether they're going to commit the act or they're preparing for the act or what they do after the act is they don't want to get caught. And the second is they use the, you know, ba basic, basic, um, you know, warfare 101. It's, it's the element of surprise. Mm -hmm. And when you wrap yourself around your environment, you become that element. You know, you take that away from, you take that away from them and you use that to your advantage. When you're prepared, it's like now he or she has to think about their next move, but you're already prepared because you got your moves all mapped out. What do I do in this case scenario? What, what's the best approach? You know, first thing is I need to stay safe. So you should have a goal. That goal mindset will keep you safe and the goal mindset will provide that, that, mind, uh, that mind power to allow you to do what you need to accomplish. And teaching that, it's, you can teach that to as young as grade school to as old as uh, independent elders mm -hmm. and what they can really do to, to, to stay safe. And I got some, uh, a few DMs actually on Twitter and people were saying, you know, when I first hear about self-defense, yeah. I always think, put your dukes up and yeah. let's engage, you know, somebody that's trying to uh, put me in a dangerous situation. But they were like, wow, I've, and now, now I'm telling my kids, I'm telling my family members, I'm telling my students mm -hmm. that, you know, self-defense also is just removing yourself from the situation. It doesn't always have to be like direct conflict. Absolutely. And you remember how we were talking and about... And a lot of people don't even know that. Yeah. 90% is mental, 10% is all physical. If you can think your way out of a situation, then by all means, you know, that's the safest route. That's the best route to take is being able to maneuver your way out of it without get, getting physical because you never know, you know, that guy may be an expert in some sort of art. Mm -hmm. He may have, be, have so much strength. He may be really high on ice that it's, it's like you may not be able to take him regardless of your skill set. Don't take that chance. Never take that chance, you know, create an opportunity in which you can escape. And, um, you know, we want it, we wanted to break it down simplify it to where we can, like I said, where we can teach this to grade school and teach it to the independent elders. So understanding what you can do to stay safe, this is something that you can apply to kids coming back to school, teaching this to kids who walk to and from. You're teaching this as part of, uh, you know, as part of a self-defense uh, uh, course that you can use without even getting physical. And a really good comment was presented at the end of our live stream because somebody, you know, watching in Kentucky mm -hmm. was saying, and you know, um, this is good for boys and girls. Yeah. So it's, it's the young, it's the old as well, and it's of either gender. It is, it is. You know, everybody and anybody can use it. Anybody, you know, when, when we broke it down, you, you got to remember the people that, we, that I have in my team, these guys, to include Officer Susie Sanchez, they really put a lot of thought into it. And um, the, the suggestions and everything and what we use, I have two of the officers that were there. These guys have paramilitary actual combat service. You know, um, our expertise in law enforcement and, of course, our expertise with our, our extracurricular activity, whether it be in a martial arts or whether it be in jiu-jitsu, but understanding what we need to do to teach, to properly teach uh, the, you know, the audience and how to stay safe without even getting physical. Because the important thing is that you saw Megan, she didn't get hands-on. She provided that distance. She utilized everything that she can to remain safe, and she was able to draw the attention. And 
you know, I, I, again, you know, this, this was a thought out process. Um, we took the acronym of danger and we broke everything down and it just fell into play for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have a crime of the week this week? Yes, sir? yes. This one is a robbery that occurred and pay attention to the crime of the week because um, the victim in this case was actually being robbed and he, you know, he screamed for help and it started the suspect and the suspect fled without even taking the bag. But, you know, again, we're reaching out. The Guam Crime Stoppers is asking help from the community. If anybody was in that area, you know, please provide information so that we can bring closure to this case. Okay, so the criminal did run themselves and mm -hmm. they're still on the run. So here's what you can do to help catch this person. On Thursday, August 22nd, our officers from the Tumon Precinct Command entertained a robbery complaint that occurred at the parking lot of Pacific Place in Tumon. The preliminary police report suggests that around 11 p.m., the victim was walking in the lower parking garage of Pacific Place when the victim was approached by an unknown man. The male individual then grabbed the victim's bag where a struggle ensued with the victim and the suspect over control over the bag. During the course of the struggle, the victim was struck in the face in which the victim was able to retain the bag and began yelling for help. The suspect, later described as possibly being local, was last seen fleeing on foot. He was described as standing about 5'7 to 5'8 and was last seen wearing a light colored shirt and dark pants. If anyone has any information about this crime or any other crime, you can call our 24-hour hotline at 477-HELP, that's 4357, or submit a tip online at guam.crimestoppersweb.com. All calls will remain completely confidential, and a cash reward of up to $1,000 could be paid if the information provided leads to an arrest and a grand jury indictment. Your call does make a difference. All right, Sarge, we appreciate it as always. So um, if anyone would like more information on this, we highly suggest you guys go to YouTube or Facebook and yeah. watch the session that we had on Crime Time. Uh, if people would like more information about tactics and techniques that they can talk with their kids or with, mm -hmm. you know, with their siblings and everything about how to have situational awareness and how to escape. Give us a call. You know, call 472-8911, ask for me, and they can easily connect you to my line. So, um, you know, I have a direct email. They can talk to the man himself. I have a direct email with, uh, you know, with the Department of Education. So uh, this curriculum is what we're going to be bringing in. You know, Halloween's coming right around the corner. And uh, this is one of the things we want to teach. You know, we wanted to bring this into the opening of the school year. But again, we had to really work and, 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 and see where our flaws are and everything and understanding, you know, practice. You know, in order for you to master the technique, you got to keep practicing it. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I'm on the DOE email uh, listing. If you guys are teachers and you want this to be taught, into your, uh, taught to your students, give me a call. You know, reach out to me and everything, and we can make the arrangements. Okay, final sense. question, Paul. Do you ever sleep? <laughs> I do. You know, when I go home and everything, it's, 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 that's my time. You know, my family, they are my structure. They are my foundation. So it really, you know. Hey, thank you for asking that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as they say, a policeman's work never ends. It, 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 you know, it's the community. We, we strive to serve the community like we always, like what we say in the office, you know, the community is the police and the police is the community. All so, right. Well, thanks so much. We'll see you next Appreciate week. you. Thank you so much. That guy, ladies and gentlemen, has your back 24-7. And we'll see you right after this. Matson is in this community. We've been in this community for decades. We're going to be in this community for decades to come. Things will get busy, things will get quiet, but we're going to be here. We're your hometown carrier, and that matters to us. Reliability is the core of our business. We take pride in ensuring that we arrive in Guam on time as scheduled. It's our local employees who understand the market, who understand the business, and provide that a hard work for you each and every day. When we hold ourselves to high standards, our customers also hold us to high standards. We establish good business relationships that turn into friendships. That's why it's so important to be here and be trusted by your customers. We want you to trust Matson like your friend, like your family. Introducing Triple J's Online Shopper, the new, faster, easier way to purchase your next vehicle. Explore hundreds of new and used vehicles in full 360-degree view. Get pre-approved instantly from the comfort of your home or office. Personalize your own finance terms and get top market value on your trade-in in just a few quick, easy steps. 
Buy with confidence from start to signature. And we'll even go the extra mile to deliver your vehicle to your home or office. Have a question? Our sales team is just a chat away for instant assistance. Click, pick, drive. Complete the entire car buying process with Triple J's online shopper and purchase your next vehicle at TripleJGuam.com today. Can I just get it right back? And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. All right, let's say happy birthday, everybody, to Jade Baluran, who has a birthday on Sunday, September 1st. Happy birthday to you, Jade, from all of your friends here at KUAM and over at Cold Stone Creamery. This comes from Mommy, who is very, very proud. Also, love coming from Elias. Happy birthday.